I'd now like to discuss another really important quantity that can be used to assess the performance of detectors. It's the detectivity. It's equal to 1 over the noise equivalent power at a bandwidth of 1 hertz. You can normalize this to the specific detector area and application where background noise is the limiting factor. Detectivity is really the upper limit of sensitivity attainable in the system, and it's really important for infrared imaging applications. So let's take an example. Let's take an example of a lead selenide detector. So it's mid-infrared, and let's calculate the minimum, the power minimum needed to be 80 dB above the noise floor. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the noise equivalent power from the data sheet. And so here, what we find is that the noise equivalent power is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10 watts per root hertz. I can make my life simple and assume that I'm operating at a 1 hertz bandwidth. So if I'm using a 1 hertz bandwidth, then I can figure out my noise floor. So my noise floor will be nothing more than essentially equal to the square root of the bandwidth times the noise equivalent power. So in this case, my noise floor will be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10 watts. OK, so now let's go ahead and calculate that minimum optical power. The minimum optical power to operate 80 dB above the noise floor will be equal to 10 to the 8 times 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10 watts. So this is equal to 0.015 watts. So the point here is that actually the lead selenide detector is pretty noisy. We can also think about another case. So we can think about an MCT detector that's cooled, and it's three stages. And we can compare it. So here, we end up with a detectivity d star that's equal to 2 times 10 to the 11 centimeters per root hertz per watt. OK, so this is centimeters times root hertz per watt. So let's assume an area that's equal to 0.25 millimeters by 0.25 millimeters. And so we can find the noise equivalent power, essentially, by taking here the square root of the area divided by d star. So, and let's assume also that we have a 1 hertz bandwidth. So here, we're going to end up with 1.25 times 10 to the minus 13 watts per root hertz. So if we assume a 1 hertz bandwidth, then essentially we know that our noise floor is just going to be equal to 1.25 times 10 to the minus 13 watts. So you can see that this detector is a lot better than our lead selenide detector. So now we can think about the minimum power that we need. The minimum power that we need is essentially just going to be equal to 10 to the 8 times, and then here, 1.25 times 10 to the minus 13 watts. OK. And so this is equal to 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 watts. 
So hopefully in this example, you can really see how to stack up detectors against each other and compare their performance and then select one that will meet the specs for your application.